In this tutorial, we're going to be learning the interactive view. We're going to start with a brief overview of the eye view or interactive view, an overview of the icons and the navigator bands, and documenting interactive view. So we're going to log in with our username and password first. Once you log in, it's going to open up to Care Compass, and it's going to show you the patients that have been assigned to you. I'm going to launch into iView here from my Care Compass. It's going to open up to Interactive View. And Interactive View, it contains navigator bands on the left hand side. For the sake of this tutorial, we're in ICU Quick View. This is going to have a little bit more detailed charting. But for the sake of this video, we're going to use this depending on the area that you're in. Depending on where you're at, it might open up in Adult Quick View or Pediatric Quick View. On the left hand side, you can see a menu with a table of contents. Your first six items on here are alphabetical but they're also the most common. The most common bands that you'll likely open in the chart. The rest of these are in alphabetical order. Or whatever areas of the chart that you might need to be going. It doesn't really matter what band you're in, you can always go back to your interactive view from your menu. The icons are up at the top. They have several different functions. The first one is to collapse your navigator bands. Gives you a little bit more real estate to chart on. The show empty columns in rows. You can see that your time frame is divided up hourly. You can use this to close out any that aren't in use at that time to give you a little bit of a smaller area to chart on, or you can open up and see a little bit more time. The eyeglass is to review results. The check mark is where you're going to sign your documentations. Cancel, and that's for when you want to cancel out of your charting. This little computer with the face on it it's how you associate a monitor, and that would be for in the areas where maybe monitoring is going to be in use, such as ICU or PACU. This button here, you can go directly to your orders and add an order from here or you can look at orders that have been placed. And this would be orders that are for signature that perhaps you have taken a telephone order and it'd be rerouted to the physician for signing. So the quick view, this band has items that will be charted on most frequently throughout the day. Just kind of a quick shortcut to the most common items such as vital signs, hemodynamic measures, and critical care areas, like a drips that will show across from the MAR, urine output, chest tubes, ventilator, and airway. Again, for critical care areas, measurements that would uh, contain your heights and weights, pain assessment, and interventions. So again, this is like a quick shortcut you don't need to look for in another band. Comfort measures, your restraint charting would be here, as well as your evaluation, your blood glucose for those frequent SATGs, activities daily living, most common safety items, and then the SIWA scale. The next band, if you click on, will open up at the top. 
and it will be your systems assessment. So this will be at the start of your shift and every four. And you'll have your vital signs that will populate. If you've charted them in quick view, you do a head to toe with neuro stuff, mental status, swallow screens, pupils, and so forth. You'll also have muscular skeletal, all your ventilation. Once again, will populate from quick view if something's been charted. Same as your artificial airway. You have respiratory and breath sounds. Separate charting for incentive spirometry. Chest tubes. And we'll move on to cardiac. Edema assessment. We have GI. We have feeding tubes. GU. If you chart under catheter and flow over to output, we have your skin assessment. We have wounds also, drains, your activities of daily living. It will automatically populate if it's been charted in quick view. Your Braden assessment. And your fall score or fall risk. The next navigator band is all your online devices, such as central lines, your IVs, arterial lines, a PCA, and a warming or cooling. In take an output band, this is going to have all your continuous infusions that come from your MAR. Medications, and that'd be if they were in large volumes, oral intake, your enteral feedings, transfusions, TPN, and then other. You're going to have output that's going to include urine, gastric tubes, stool, drains. chest tubes, and we're going to have CRRT. There's also a band here for adult education where you can do education teaching. It gives you multiple options to chart when you're doing patient teaching. Now I will show you what to do with the documentation. Intake and output, the vital signs will be discussed in a separate video. So I'm going to chart on pain assessment. If you double click on the entire time column, and this will open each item that you want to chart on. If you want to go directly to a certain section, you just click on it and it moves you into that. So as you can see, each of these boxes has a check mark, and that means I could just move through my charting fairly simply. So my FYO2, you can see it's highlighted in blue, and if I hover over it, it gives me reference text that I can click on. If I'm going to chart on it, Point five FIO2, pressure support, just push enter to move down to the next. This is my peep, and here's my ventilator mode. With a rate of 12 and a tidal volume of 500. I'm going to push enter. It's going to move me down to my next section. As you can see on the left, I have a diamond with an arrow in it. That means it's a trigger for a conditional field. If I chart on something specific on here, it's going to open up further charting elements. 
So this is what I'm going to chart on is a cuff tracheal tube. And it's going to bring up a chart for me to chart on. I'm going to chart. It's an 8.0 on the size where it's placed. It's oral on the left-hand side. It's at 24 centimeters. And I have a securement device. You can see that I have several boxes here. This is a multi-choice field, so I can chart as many elements as I want to. I'm just going to press enter again, and it's going to move me down to the next field. I'm going to come down here to chart on pain. Again, you can see I have a conditional field. So if I have A modified flack now opens up modified flack for me to fill out those fields. So I'm going to show you how this little calculator at the bottom of those fields work. This is an alpha response and I can only click on one. It's going to automatically move to the next as I select one. I'm going to choose and go down the order of what's going on. And now that I've finished all those fields, you can see that this has given me a pain score. So it actually can give us a number for modified flack. You can also go to your pain interventions. Pharmacological, I'm going to give them some IV analgesic. And I'm also going to position them. I'm going to go up here, and as you can see, I have a green check or a check mark. I'm going to sign this. And my purple charting now becomes black because it's been saved. You can see all these check marks are the elements that I've already charted to. I'm going to go to my systems assessment. And you can see there's some of the same items that have been charted on. If I want to do a head to toe, I can double click on the time column and it'll open right up all the charting elements. This icon here is a customized view. There's certain charting elements that do not show up face up. If you single click on this, it just opens up. Box to choose what you want to chart on. Anything gray with a check mark on it means it's open to view. If there's something that you want to chart on that might not be out there or clicked on, you can see that we can just find the one we're looking for, like seizure documentation, like if our patients had a seizure. None of those things default to open. I want to click on view and default on open so it's going to open up for me on default. If I click on each item that I want to chart on for this particular seizure episode. Then I'm going to go down here and click on OK. And that's going to open up my seizure documentation. You can also see in your customized view that if you want to find something specific to chart on, you just have to search it out. So maybe I wanted to search pulses.
I could find where to chart on pulses. So as you move through your systems, again you can multi-select different items here and push enter to move you to the next. We have a RAS level, which is actually the ability to score with the level of consciousness. Orientation. Again, you just move through your systems. You'll just single click through each of these and choose them. We also have conditional logic here. If I was going to chart on Anna Sarka, you'll actually open up another charting element here. We also have what's called dynamic groups. You can see it's like a little grid with an arrow. And if I click on this, it opens up for us. And the dynamic group is here to choose from, so I can choose a colostomy. It's new and it's in the right upper quadrant, and I'm going to click OK. And that now is going to provide me with all the charting I need for charting on this new colostomy. You can just move through and chart on all these different elements. If you want to skip an item, you can just go right past it and go to the next. If I were to chart in irrigation volume, such as 100 mls, that element will actually flow over. And again, you'll just move through your systems, charting, and when you're done, you're going to click on your check mark, and it's going to sign your charting, and the purple turns to black, and that means you've now charted. And then to finish, I'm going to refresh my screen. And as you can see, I've refreshed, and this charting's all still there. If I wanted a chart on maybe this here, I could right click and add a second result. Maybe I forgot something. So I'm going to chart regular on here. It's purple. And now I'm just going to go back up to the check mark and save it. And then there's a number two in parentheses next to it. So that means there's two elements charted at two different times. So every time you go back to change, it's going to save that information. I can also double click on the date bar. And you can see it says insert date time. And I can change my time frames. But if I want to chart something in actual time, I just click actual. And that's going to open up a new time column for me. So I can go ahead and chart on something different. If I click on just the blue bar, it's going to open up just that specific section. and then I can save that. So 
So now you can see I have a specific time frame in here. And I can go back to my every hour. So then you won't see all the elements if you're going to look. You can see that there are things charted within that hour. And if you want to look at what's been charted, you can hover over it and it will tell you. If you want to right click on it, you can review it and it'll pull up all the details on that date and time that that information was charted, who charted it, and it tells you what the charting was right here in this window. If maybe you want to delete something that you've charted, A good way to go about that would be to go to specifically an element that's been charted. So if I want to maybe change or delete this right here, I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to go to modify. And then I'm going to change it to a 7.5. And then I click Save. You can see that there's a little triangle there next to it. If you right click on it, and then View Results again. You can see there's two separate results, the first one and then the current one. So then you can see the status has actually been modified. So if maybe you want to unchart something, you're going to right click on it and you'll click unchart. I've got to give some reason. Maybe I charted on the wrong patient. I'm going to assign that and it's going to show up with an in error. So if you right click on it, you can view results, and you're going to see it's still there, which you originally charted, but it's going to show now that you have uncharted it as an error. So if I want to delete something, Or maybe I want to flag an event, something that I feel might be important. I can right click and click on flag. And you can see it actually gives me a little flag and highlights it. I'm going to refresh it. I'm going to click on the flag box. And then we can see what's been flagged as important in our charting. If I flag it, it will also show up in my S bar under flagged events. And you can see there's one element that's been charted under flagged events. And if you hover over, it'll show it to you. I'm going to go back over to my eye view from here. And I can continue charting if I wish.